Okay, you can see that it's Mr. Yang against uh, Seven Dawn Amateur. We'll be looking at the game uh, mostly from White's perspective. <clears throat> so, in when I sent out it, sent it out as homework, I asked everyone, you know, mark all of White's next moves, all the reasonable next moves. Um, like uh, F3, in a sense, is a reasonable next move, but it would be completely changing. It wouldn't be paying attention to any of the things that are going on at the moment. Uh, top's not necessarily important. Uh, let me change that real quick. Now the top's important. He's prepared on top. But before that, he's not prepared, so it's not particularly important. So B and C are moves that keep pressure on black as we negate the top. And they're both fine. There's no reason to, to play um, a loose pinch. So that, you know, these are just the reasonable moves. And one thing that no one marked in the game, Mr. Yang plays here, but no one marked E. And to me, these are entirely different moves. They're not basically the same move, not at all. As Mr. Yang plays it, the right side is now small. As Feng Young would play it, she always plays here, the right side is very interesting. So that's a huge difference, the right side being we're done until later, or it's a big part of the opening. That's a very big difference. OK, so that makes sense to everybody? I'll make sure I'm. OK, good. Black played here, which is his style, nice and clean and basic. Again, I asked people about um, the types of moves. OK, place here. <clears throat> uh, here, there's a particular, uh, a lot of my students marked this kind of move. And I think it's important to realize why this isn't so good. Can anyone name the principle why this is not a basic concept here? I don't want to say it's unplayable. R14. Mm. OK, let's do the same thing over here now. Same principle I'm trying to bring out. So can anyone name the principle here? Why this isn't a basic concept? Okay, no one's speaking out, so I'll name it. <clears throat> the principle is, in the early opening, and early opening is when, uh, like for instance, if we look at C11, C11 is this huge move, right? big open area. So in the early opening, when we have these really large areas, the large areas are bigger than vague attacks. If you have a serious attack, a severe attack, that's fine. That's pretty rare in the early opening, though. So that's what this is, is we're attacking specifically a group that, if it ignores, it'll still be fine. So instead of a specific attack, it's too early for that, we can play this move, which is in a, one of the last big areas on the board, and pressures black. Now the attack will be severe. So I thought that was a good, um, good thing to see in this game. Someone also mentioned uh, we shouldn't be touching weak stones. And a lot of people get confused on this, so let's uh, let's deal with that briefly. <clears throat> White touches a weak stone. The reason we don't do that 
is because this puts black ahead in the fight. Black gets a free move and then spends his gote move and he ends up with three moves and he's very strong. So when you contact a weak stone, it becomes very strong. That's why we don't. But let's define contact a little bit. I'm going to play L3 again. Just a second. Here it comes. Exact same L3, but it's no longer a one-on-one -on -one fight. So Black's not going to get that extra help. So we don't really call this a contact move because it doesn't create the one-on-one -on -one fight. Here, we do call it a contact move because once again, this is Sente. Very powerful next move. This one, we don't call contact because these stones are virtually connected. They're not actually connected, but they're virtually connected. So again, we don't call this a contact move. So, the kick is not a contact move in that context. So it doesn't, it doesn't negate that rule. Okay, onward. Uh, let's just notice the difference between Mr. Yang's move and B. <clears throat> B, they're both perfectly fine. B continues to grow White's area, putting pressure on Black, while White's move negates what Black can do. So one is negating Black, one is building White. Very different concepts. And... Uh, Mr. Yang, it's not his style to say, oh, I'm going to build something really big. That tends to be impractical. He's a very practical player. He says, I'm going to play a basic opening move which stops Black from getting out of control rather than threatening to get out of control. So it's a more practical move. They're both perfectly fine. Notice K3 on the third line because this is not a Moyo situation. <clears throat> I also asked them um, to play out the kick at A. And this is interesting because all of the homework I got back, everyone played M3. M3 is what we usually see. But on this board, M3 is small, Black gets out very comfortably and very easily, and Black can have Sente and not much problem. But if we kick and play here, this also removes a running direction from Black. And now Black has, what, this move? Oh, now we're surrounding Black, and Black's really puny and pitiful. Also, we're building a very large right side. So that's why I wanted them to play out this one uh, because we don't usually see O6, but on this board it works well. So I guess one thing I, one reason I thought this was a good game, there's, you'll see many, many moves where we have uh, unusual or difficult decisions. Here we see three ways for white. If A, notice the A stone for black. Well, we're trying to live, and he's got this A stone right in our face. Right? This is, uh, this is a, a rather limiting move. If had black had played the other way, then we're making more uh, easier life. This makes sense, right? Hi, Vano. Uh, Ilya, I, uh, before you got here, I told everyone the story of you and your son and how he almost beat me this morning. 
I love the look on his face. <laughs> he, I didn't see the Atari, and he saw it, and he captured the stones with a big smile, and he was giggling. I had to play really hard to win the game. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. I was like, man, I'm going to lose this game. I can't believe I'm going to lose this game. Okay. So, uh, here is difficult, and it um, allows Black to continue all the outside moves, which work so well in this position. So that leaves us with uh, B and C. Now C is pretty interesting. Is that contacting a weak stone or not? What's um, what's our opinion on that? Sweet says it. People are saying it doesn't. And what makes uh, F16 a strong stone? What makes us think that D is a strong stone? Anyone else? Okay. I don't agree with these answers. So I'm going to make D a, a weak stone. There I go. A is a weak stone. Don't touch it. All I've done is strengthen white. I haven't effect I haven't done anything to the top. I haven't come near the top. All I've done is live. A is now a weak stone. Don't touch it. So it was a strong stone because our group is in no condition and will not be in a condition anytime soon to mess with the D stone. Therefore, it's a strong stone. I struggled with uh, strong and weak stones for a long time. Asked, I asked hundreds of questions with my various pro teachers. <clears throat> you know, of course, they kept saying, well, read it out, read it out. And I kept telling them, no, I don't want to read out. I don't plan on reading out. I want a principle. And uh, it really taught me about this concept. Since white's weak, therefore black is strong, this whole concept. How do you recognize it? That's a great question. And so the one thing I mentioned is the big one. It's relative. If white was strong, D's weak, because it's a knight's move and far from the other one. Uh, but since they're weak, I can never take advantage of it. Something else that Mr. Yang said once <clears throat> was very helpful to me. One day I'm just picking his brain. I said, you know, just rake, basically raking over the coals. Tell me how to know. And he finally says, well, you know, it's really hard for us professionals to know too. I go, oh, that's the piece of information I was really looking for. If it's hard for a pro to know, and we're really talking about general and a general picture rather than a specific answer, and that really helped me uh, to think. You know, in the future, if I just get a good basic guess, as long as it's a good educated guess, that'll be enough. Okay. Another thing, uh, another would be the B move. Let's look at that. So because D is strong here, so yes. It's okay to touch it with C, exactly. Because there's the two principles. Don't touch weak stones and do touch strong stones. Those are both really important. Let's look at a uh, minute. What's the next move for white here? Somebody? E12, F12. So these are the three moves to think about, and I agree. You all mentioned these three, and these are the ones. A, just too weak. Black will just cut. White has no right to haunt at all. Uh, 
if B, now the whole group looks really heavy all of a sudden. So C would be the move, get out quickly. But the problem here is that the triangle stones are really nice and light, but the square stones are very heavy. They're not talking the same language. This is an inconsistent muddled mess. So there's no real good relation here that looks good. But the touch over here looks nice. And we'll see something else here in a moment. White has two ways. Both are reasonable, but um, white forces black to commit immediately. If white plays this later, black could change his mind. So white says, I want you to tell me right now what you're going to do. For black to submit, look slow. Black wants to connect to make the Atari soon at D16. Then the Atari, and now not A, because if Atari, black has become strong and white's weak. White has to come back. But if we only come out, now white's strong and black's weak, black needs to fix, and we have Sente. And if we consider Tawari changing the order of the moves, would white now play here? No. That's a really slow, very slow pushing way from behind. So Tawari shows us we don't want to play this way. Okay, so Atari, and then straight back, leaving a weakness, and black fixes. So <clears throat> there's something important to see here about the A stone. So let's go back and look. Let's say white gets out and black fixes on top. That's pretty slow. To fix on top, that's slow. But in the game, that's what happened. Black plays at A. White has made black in the extra stones in the area that was a little the, um, slow to fix. White has made black fix them. So that perspective makes white feel much better about black getting that area because he had to play that extra move. I hate to say it's actually over-concentrated, but uh, it makes white feel better. Of course, white's going to play here. Not A. A is way small. Okay. Looks like three ways for white. A is nice. Uh, take some good corner profit. Chase the stone. B. Take the corner. Threaten the future. And C. Uh, take the corner away. But a few things to look at here. Let's start with B. Instead of playing the honey, if black just backs off, how would white continue? Let's go back and look at that. Instead of black playing the honey. Oh, this way. How would white continue? Um, I'd be tempted to play this way. And same thing, but white's better in this case. Black's less. Black has less points. White has more outside. So over here, let's look at white. Usually, when white takes this corner, it has a lot to do with the follow-up. Usually when we see this, 
it's not so thick on top. It's more like this. So the follow-up M17 is easy and comfortable. So Q18 takes the corner and has an easy next move. But in the game, White takes the corner, but now the next move is not as easy as it used to be. Now White's trying to live inside a thick area instead of a thin area. So since this next move is difficult, the corner is less profitable. Do you understand the thinking I'm bringing up? This move is smaller than normal because the next move is less valuable. Right. So White's not too encouraged to play here. It's big, but not as big as usual, and other things are still as big as usual. A is nice, of course, but a few things. Area 1's not real, and the Moyle-like thing we're building in Area 2, it's also not real. This is not a practical move. It's fun and exciting, and it's certainly stylistic, but Mr. Yang likes very practical moves. And in the bottom left, that's a lot of black stones and if he gets no points in the corner, then there's um, that's fantastic. For black to play all those moves and get nothing in the corner, that's huge. So that's very practical, and that's the way he goes. A lot of pros like very practical. Some pros like Takamiya, they play only for the future. But a lot of pros really like the practicalness. Why not P? Three, oh five, M three. Uh, we looked at that earlier, um, so I won't go over that again. Latecomers will just have to have to suffer. Okay. Natural follow-ups here. C two threatens to connect. Black stops that, white lives. Okay, so white took the whole corner, and white has lost area one. No problem, Mythical. I feel guilty for not going back, but since I already answered it, I don't want to take all the time. White loses area one, but let's notice something. Area one is not whites. That's one of the problems with this shape is that this black stone's alive. It'll either connect under or connect out. So white ended up not getting this area, but white doesn't have this area, which really shows even more how practical this invasion is. Okay, we're back to here. And black plays at H3. So now, white has three ways. Probably most of you are familiar with the um, principle profit before running. This is a good example. Uh, the B stone will not be settling on the bottom. There's no room to settle the B stone will be running. So the principle is take the profit first, then run. We see this principle all the time. It's a very powerful way to get profit before you defend. But white chooses against this. Let's go back and look at why. Well, we can see it from here. Let's start here. White simply comes out. Two reasons. The whole A wall, I'll mark it A and B, because at the moment, we'll treat them as the same. They're not exactly the same because there's a cutting stone there. But that's a lot of black stones. 
And on the one hand, whites respecting the black wall by simply getting out. And secondly, let's watch this. White, black passes for a moment. When white kicks, this black stone hurts the, is, makes black stronger to bother the white stones. So it's black's movement, right? Did you get all the passing correct? Black can now play uh, a B lots of options, better options for black now than there are here. So kicking hurts the white stones, which are already hurt because they're next to the wall. I'm kind of rambling here. Am I painting a picture that's understandable? White says, lots of black stones, I will respect that, rather than adding more black stones. So I think that's a really important principle to see. Now the hard thing is, when do you use these principles? Under what conditions? And that's extremely hard to answer because there's nearly infinite positions to choose from. But this is one reason I like going over professional games, is to see their decisions. And he played it. Here? That's nice to see. I love his style because it's just very fundamental. Okay. So, black can now connect under. And the answer? People say no. Okay, let's, um, if we stop it, that weakens the A stone and the B group. No. Well, I would like the A stone and the B group to be weaker. So certainly on some level we want to stop it. So the question is, is the C group ready to start being aggressive in these areas? No. The C group is still no eyes floating. So an aggressive player might choose the style and say, I'm going to, you know, just separate them and, and boom, 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 boom. Great. But Mr. Yang, who's so good at just the basic next move, says, no, I'm not ready to do that. I'll just use the Aji, start using my stones, and wait till it's the right time. Black kills the cutting stone. Very important thing to do. So now the entire... B, the entire C area, very strong for black. Black is completely prepared to fight now. And white has two unsettled groups. Someone says B is weaker. Anyone else have opinions? Uh, not just opinions, but someone says the B group's behind enemy lines. That's a pretty big one. Anything else? So, when it comes to basic weakness, they both look pretty weak. Neither one has a base. So behind enemy lines, that's one, one way to decide. Any other deciding factors that we can think of? And three is not settled, which makes A stronger. Excellent. Who said that? M below. Yeah. If, the, if black's group on the bottom isn't so strong, then it's harder for that group to attack A. Excellent point. None of my students nor myself caught that one. That's a good principle. Yeah. Uh, B's heavier. Yes. Good one. Now that's the one I wanted to get to. The B group is a committed group. It's got like a bullseye painted on it. There it is. It's well defined. We know what it looks like. We know its options. That's a real group that needs help. Um, the A group, um, we're not even sure A and D are going to be connected. 
Uh, they may or may not connect to the E stone. Very undecided, undefined group. It's much lighter. It can, make, it can do anything it wants. It can move to the left, top, right, try to build it. It can do anything it wants. But the B group is, is heavy, right? So by contacts the strong stone, with that principle again, very strong black stone. White lids. Uh, let's notice this thing. <clears throat> White's A group was weak. It's become strong. That's valuable. Black's B group was very strong and it got stronger. That's not very valuable. It's a perfect example of why we contact strong groups. They get stronger, it's a waste. We get stronger, big benefit. That's a perfect example of why we contact strong stones. Black starts cutting us. We've got three ways. One thing I, I thought about doing in this review, <clears throat> which it just takes too much time, but I, I thought I'd bring it up here, is to try to notice, try to think about what, um, like, two-digit two cues, what they might do here. Two-digit cues do the strangest things, like, I don't know, like this. And it's like, you look at the movement, what, what are they thinking? What are they trying to do? And it's very confusing. Uh, what else might they do? Um, I don't know, this. It's hard to think about what they would do because it doesn't fit the situation. So uh, I would say that white is trying to make the three triangle stones work together towards benefit. And the other, the Q moves I tried to mimic a moment ago didn't really do that. A, B, and C are the moves that work the three triangle stones together. I think counter cross cuts should be the first thing to look at. Uh-huh. Uh, black did get sente. So result is okay. Oh, sure. Uh, someone pointed out that white contacted the strong stone, but black got sente. Sure. Yeah, it's not white, but locally white got a great benefit. Usually if you have a weak group, you have to live in gote. That's common, sure. So A, B, and C. Um, these are things that are difficult to choose. Each one of these has a benefit. With black, we stop M3 from connecting. Good, this is a good time to do that. Yeah, and C doesn't do that. So we get rid of C immediately. Good, I hadn't considered that. Um, A, Use, makes the white stones touch, therefore they're useful. B doesn't necessarily make them touch, so it's less useful. A builds a base on the bottom, B doesn't do that. So we'll see that A simply holds more benefit. But this is um, very much the example of why I chose this game. So many times we come across difficult choices of how to accomplish something basic. So I thought it was uh, good. Again, lots of choices. Uh, which one and why? And if someone can name, I assume someone's saying connected B. Some, oh, connected A, okay. Now, B is the main connection. That's the main group. Someone says A, connect to the non-main group. D is consistent with making a base. Uh huh. So there's a reason for D. That's a principle. Make a base. Okay. Any other principles to work with here? B, get out. That's a consistent 
thing. Let's get our group out in Sente. C, I don't really see a reason for C. Sacrificing is too soft. Ah. A, so that black doesn't have great shape. So A continues to use the sacrifice stones. Yes. Now there's a proverb. When, what's it? Um, instead of sacrificing one, sacrifice two. And another proverb. When you're sacrificing two, make it three. And another proverb, when sacrificing three, make it four. And there might even be one, when sacrificing four, make it five. But when we save this stone, now this dead group has four liberties instead of none, or instead of one. So it's much more useful. Right. So that's the biggest principle, is get the most use you can out of your stones. Black connects. Again, four, four ways to play. Lots of difficult choices in this game. Which one and why? A for sure. Connect out. Time to get out. D, capture the stone. Now that's not an I when we capture. Right? That's not an I keep up the attack on both groups, so B. B is a little funny because it still has two cuts. A, because you don't understand B and C. A's dual purpose, connect or get out. Uh-huh. A lot of good stuff. A to attack both sides. Uh-huh. Let's look at that. So, if black gets out, this is a nice capture. Good for base, good to hurt black in this area. And if black saves it, we have uh, chasing this group. So that's reasonable. And it's a thick white group. Very solid, literally uncuttable. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and again, this is a great example of why I like to review pro games, is why did he choose this one? Well, if we look at White's next move here, yeah, we can see next moves, but here, what's his next move? Oh, it's much more pointed, right? Just bam, you're right, much more uh, fierce move, much more powerful next move, top or bottom. While this one, it's more like generic. Yes, there are good moves, but more not immediate and direct. So like getting out, let's make sure that's true. You fool, I will cut you. Oops, white's completely out, right? Completely out. And hurting black much more than the other way. So both moves get out, but this one, is a more useful move as it produces a, a better next move. Okay. Black says, I can't let you have the group. Good. Yeah, K4 is a bit, no, it's still a Dawn move. Most Dawn players would just connect that. Okay, here, three moves. C starts surrounding black, and saves the cut. That's big. Um, a and B. Actually, A and B. Check this out. This white move says, I'm going to play A or B next. Black says, OK, I'll let you. So really, A or B are the only next moves. Because that they deliver, they make good on the threat white just said, right? White, white makes a threat, A and B make good on that threat, C doesn't. So A and B are the only real moves to look at. 
But again, there's that principle. How do we decide? Because when you're in the middle of a game, right, and also you're in this position, we come up with the strangest moves. Well, we just calm down. We start singing. Okay, so A or B. And why? B works better with the side. B works better with the side. I don't see that. A, since it helps a base for both. Yes. A's the side. B's the center. Uh, doesn't black live locally either way? We don't care about black living. We care about white getting health in the best manner. And like, um, who said it? Doubt, doubt said it well. A is the base for both players. Right. So white takes the base away. And of course, Atari. Okay, let's read my comment here. There's a rule, always play the co. Assuming the co is something you want to take in the first place. If white takes the co and fills co, white's virtually alive and black is weak. So, we take it. This does not mean that white's expecting or even wanting to win the co at this point. Taking the co is its own profit. Now we'll see why that's true in a moment. Black plays the cold threat. Now here's the profit. Black had to play a cold threat. He didn't want to play a cold threat. We just removed one of his cold threats. And the white group now is more defined. That, that is profit for white. So, if white plays the co and loses, the whole group becomes weak. So we can't afford to play the co. So we get out. Uh, and that's the reason behind always takes the co. Let's go back and do that. So white could simply play here. Or, same position, but we used up the co. It's just the only difference is we used up the co threat. Black was forced to use a co-threat. Okay, good. Again, if white takes the co and fills, white's virtually alive and black is weak, so white takes. Black gets out. Black puts white behind enemy lines. That's very important to see. So white doesn't want to fill the co because white's going to be surrounded. We don't want to get surrounded. Time to get out. Four ways out. And each one has benefit. Yes, Engelo says it right away. D uses the Aji stones. That's the most we can do next. Use those Aji stones. Very important. Boom. Use those Aji stones. Black responds. Did Black's move put white behind enemy lines again? If so, we respond. If not, we don't have to respond. No. He, let's draw the straight line between the two black stones, and no, there's a white stone in the way. So he didn't put us behind enemy lines. So, white can play here. White's move hurts black's base. Threatens to capture the corner, and and if he take, cuts it, C takes the whole side and the corner. Notice how White takes action based on things that are happening rather than a big move in Gote. So, for instance, uh, White says, "Hey, I got out, and I have a good next move." Yeah, but you're ignoring all the things that are happening. So white takes action based on these things that are happening. This is the big principle. Should white save the A-stone? We're clearly behind enemy lines. Should we save the A-stone? You know how sometimes a stone is worth like a point 
and sometimes it's worth 100 points, depending on if it's a cutting stone or just it's a matter of what it represents. So should you save it or not? I can't believe we've been here 45 minutes. That's impossible. Wow. H7 threatens the cut. Yes. So it's valuable to save because it keeps the Aji. Yeah. Good. Black says, you're right. I've got to defend. So... Um, save the co because now the cut's real. Period. Black is cut in Mia, which means white's alive and has taken the bottom. So a very profitable result. Black cuts just to get some Aji there. Black makes um, two threats here. I guess it's kind of obvious. I thought there might be two different moves here, but these seems to be the only one. Now white has Mii. Um, should white be running out or taking uh, run out and split black into two? Or B, take the corner? C is weak. Running out hurts. Someone, someone says, by the tone of my voice, I gave it away. It's funny how that happens sometimes. So this is an excellent um, point that A separates black into two for two weak groups. But if we play the big move, this is the base for everybody and points still we can split. So black was split in either case. Okay. So three options for white. Finish the shape with A to remove black's forcing moves. Cut with C or perhaps we're done and play the big move at B. But we just said it a minute ago. Uh, turning black into two weak groups is uh, that's where the value is. If your opponent's weak, and they could take a hundred moves till you realize it, but there's just profit there. When he's weak, it's you've got to defend, 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 and that's profit, profit, profit. For me, this would be the hardest move of the game because there's five ways to save the cutting stone. Each one has, there's, for me, this is tough. Um, it's easy to find a good move. It's, for me, it's very, very hard to find the best move. That perhaps shows my weakness because my, my biggest weakness is reading. I hate reading. D looks good. Because if black gets this group out, now he has two seriously weak groups. And if this group gets out, then it immediately kills the other one. Yeah, that's a great one. But he didn't play that one. So there's another example of why I like to review pro games. White plays this one. And I'm like, I start reading, well, why did he play that one? How would you, do, how would you make this choice? Honey or not to honey? How do we decide? Any principles here? Uh, 
on to the head of two stones. B keeps up the attack on both. Uh -huh. Two in a row is not enough. So again, we have reasons to play A and reasons to play B. So let's watch what he did, and we'll ask the question. Why did he choose that one? Someone tell me, why did he choose that one? Why didn't he hunt it? Both are weak and quite strong. With the hunting, both black roots are weak, but white's weak too. So this is another reason I wanted to go over this game, because we look at the move and it's like, why did white choose that one? And you start, it's like, well, white's strong and black's weak on both sides. So then I go back to this when I replay the game over and over, and I say, how, what needs to change in my mind so that B's obvious? And I'll go over games like this literally 50 to 100 times over a matter of years. I mean, I don't know if that's strange to you or not. This is what I do. And I go, what can I change in my mind so that B becomes obvious? And after a while, it's like, oh, it's obvious. And my mind has changed. But that's, that's what I do. I love reviewing games and trying to change my way of thinking to a professional way. Um, well, we still have a little bit of time. Good. Black Ataris, there's two ways. There's the greedy way. I want to keep everything. Yeah, but now there's mean old Audrey everywhere. So he fixes. Was B obvious to Yang, or would he say it's a matter of taste? Uh, that's a good question. Now, I've spent a lot of time with Mr. Yang going over these things, asking, picking his brain. I mean, hundreds of hours. And so I feel that I know most of the way he would respond to things. Um, and I feel strong in this case, he would say, oh no, honey's weak. So don't be weak. But that's, that's me guessing. I think it's an educated guess, but still, that's me guessing. White plays the strong way here. And again, B's weak, A's strong. Black fixes, white fixes. Okay, three choices for white. Again, so many examples where there's multiple ways to go, and each one holds meaning. There's a rule when touched, touch back, suggesting A or B, because we've created a one-on-one -on -one fight. Whoever plays next there is going to get a nice advantage. So A, B, or C. Anybody? White group is weak and heavy. So someone just said the D group is weaker than the E group. Yes. That's the, that's the main one. The real fight is between D and F. That's the fight that's going on. Black is taking a moment out saying... I'm going to do a leaning attack or something. And if white falls for it, this could get ugly. Because the D group is in the center with no eyes. So yeah, the D group for sure. Help them the weakest. A group, weak and behind enemy lines. There's two, three ways to run. How do we decide?
Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? Fastest would be C. B touches a weak stone. C puts pressure on both. C because O17 is weak. Uh -huh. Okay, so someone brings out that D is pushing from behind. Yes, that's a big rule. Don't push from behind. Now white's still behind enemy lines and black's even stronger. Right, so that one's out. B and C is all about the black stone. Is the E stone weak or strong? Someone give me a reason to think one way or the other? Because if E is weak, we're going to play C. And if E is strong, we're going to play B. Someone says that E is strong. What makes us think that? E is stronger than A. Yeah. To say something is stronger than another, that sounds it could be 49% uh, to 51%. That's pretty equitable. But to say that A is weak suggests that E is noticeably stronger. And I think that says it better. Yeah, the A group is uh, uh, eyeless or one eye behind enemy lines, pretty weak. We will not be uh, invading with this group. So touch the strong stone. A or B? One of these is dead wrong. We'll start with that one. Which one is dead wrong and why? Yes, pushing from behind is a famous wrong thing to do in most cases. It's specific cases, but we won't get into it right now. Uh, B is weak? No, between the two, B is stronger. A is cuttable, B is not cuttable. Uh, B is bad because it only captures two. I would like to capture two stones in there. A is an overplay. But B doesn't do anything. Sure, B runs home. B has no spirit. Oh, Ryan, well said. Someone says B is the right move. So B is self-restricting. So the question is, is there something to do on the right because of black's thin moves? Yeah, there's something to do. How much? I don't know, but clearly black is not a finished group there. There's cuts all over the place. Clearly black is weak. Then why would you play a self-restricting move saying, Black, I want you to fix all your weaknesses. No, 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 no. You must reach out and play, take advantage of the problems. Uh, let's change it a little bit. Let's add a black stone here. Now, on the right side, Black's quite strong. Well, then, of course, you're going to pull back. There's nothing to do. But if there's stuff to do, then you go in the other direction so that you always keep your options open. A or B? B would be the safe way. No, A is the safe way. That's, um, let me mark this. We want the C and the D to be connected. If we go towards B, I guess I want to explain my definitions here. Let's start with this. See how we can separate white if white goes that way? That's why I'm calling that the aggressive way. Well, if we play this one, we can still connect. So that's why I'm calling one way aggressive and one way safe. And he plays what I consider the safe way, where the stones are harder to, to cut. Black goes underneath. 
light captures, light starts the co. Light's job is to get this whole thing settled, so of course this Atari. Now a Q player would do something else, right? And all of a sudden, all the black stones are connected and white's eyeless. But our job is to get everything nice and connected, so we Atari. White does not want to fight the co. There's too much at stake. Yeah, if black wins the co and the cutting stones live, all the white could die. So white simply plays the safe move. Now that white's strong, we can play co. Black plays up there. If the C group is weak, then white's going to play A to keep the pressure up. If the C group is strong, then white will play B to live and take points. So is the C group strong or weak? Why is it strong? Someone says it doesn't have two eyes. Sounds reasonable. Any other ideas? Lots of ways out. Okay. Kowali says it well. It can easily get two eyes. Well, if you can live any time you want, that makes you strong. So White says, you fool, give me a break, I can live any time I want. So pretty hard to attack a group that can live any time it wants. So down here. Okay, we're definitely over time here. And we're only, well, we're over halfway, but there's a lot left. I encourage you to, uh, as always, to download this game and go through these options, so many options for White. And uh, just try to read his mind. You know, why is he making this decision? Um, how can I change my thinking so that I would see it that way too? Those questions. Okay, well, I hope we all at least had fun today and hopefully learned something. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, this takes us down to how many lessons in the fun? This will take us down to one. So uh, if you all want us to continue, feel free to donate. And thanks everyone for coming. Okay, see you all later. Bye.